Hello, and uh, t thank you for being here. My name is Ville Makela, and I'm giving this talk with my co-author, Sumita Sharma. We are both from the University of Tampere, Finland. We are here to talk about challenges in public display deployments, more specifically about external forces that affect these deployments. To explain this in more detail, public display deployments are often, uh, often experience very surprising and unwanted effects. And these effects are frequently due to external factors, properties and phenomena that are not directly related to the deployment. Over the past few years, we have worked on numerous in the wild deployments and experienced our fair share of surprising issues. So this talk is ultimately a 15 minute rant on things that can go wrong. And uh, we hope that those of you who have worked with public displays before can relate to some of these. Uh, based on this, we took a more systematic approach to explore these issues on a larger scale. With this in mind, we had two primary research questions. Firstly, we wanted to know what types of external factors there are that affect these deployments. Second, we wanted to investigate how current research reacts to these effects. To answer these research questions, we used the following methodology. First, we gathered issues from our own public deployments that were due to external factors. Then we conducted a literature review of 71 papers that presented a public display deployment or issues regarding such. From these publications, uh, I'm sorry, uh, then we combined these issues from both sides, resulting in a total of 61 issues. Uh, utilizing this final data set, we used affinity diagramming with three researchers to uh, categorize the issues. Going back to one of our research questions, we identified four levels of reactions to observed issues. A common reaction, or non-reaction, if you will, is to do nothing about the issue. In our data set, 40% of issues were ignored. A similarly common reaction is to adapt to the issue. By adapting, we mean taking some action against the issue, but at the same time introducing a trade-off or requiring constant use of resources. Solving was significantly less common. By solving, we refer to a permanent solution that does not introduce trade-offs. The last category is embracing, which refers to taking advantage of the observed effect or by simply seeing the effect as positive. To answer the first research question, we present the taxonomy of external factors. We identified six categories in total, and we will now define each of them and provide some real-world examples. Sumita will continue from here. Okay, so the first category of our taxonomy is the weather. Weather primarily refers to factors such as sunlight, rain, snow, cold, and I've learned if you're in Denver, a sudden hailstorm. Effects range from visibility issues to unusable systems and destroyed hardware. Weather can also lead to positive effects. A nice weather often results in more users and increased interaction times. As practical examples of weather as an external factor, we experienced issues in one of our own install installations. We deployed a gesture-controlled multi-display application in a large tent in a housing fair in the summer of 2012. On sunny days, sunlight penetrated the tent's surface, which uh, tent's fabric so strongly that it rendered the depth sensors unresponsive. To solve the issue, we hung thick black curtains on top of the installation space. We also experienced issues with rain. One night, there was a heavy rainstorm that completely soaked the entire carpeted floor. Some of our equipment, such as laptops, were saved as each night we would lock them up in a closet. However, the speakers were destroyed, as well as a main uh, PC that was hidden be behind a piece of plywood. The PC we could replace within a reasonable time frame. However, we did not have spare speakers. But since the issue happened towards the end of the fair, user experienced the installation without soundscape for the remainder of the fair. The second category is events, by which we refer to events such as festivals that temporarily but significantly alter the characteristics of the deployment space or its surroundings. Events typically do two things. First, they alter the social setting of the space. For instance, current literature reports that events have resulted in a more relaxed 
in a more relaxed setting, which fosters interaction with public displays. Second, events affect crowds and people flow. In most cases, events equal to higher amounts of people, which can lead to security risk and interference with interaction. For instance, one of our gesture control displays that was, de that was deployed uh, within our university campus in a large space to ensure high visibility, uh, what happened was that during the, day, uh, during the installation time, one day there was an event for the elderly that was held in the adjacent auditorium. Despite the large open deployment space, it became unusually full when hundreds of people poured out of the auditorium. Some people noticed the, noticed the display and tried interacting with it, but others would invariably disrupt that interaction by moving past the display between the user and the sensor. Moreover, those interacting with the display quickly became uncomfortable as they felt they were in, in the way of the others. So even though the event provided an opportunity for a large number of potential users, this wasn't realized. The third category is surroundings, which refers to areas and their persistent characteristics surrounding the deployment space, including, but not limited to, nearby buildings, their functions, and traffic. Surroundings may affect many things, including the people flow and the amount of people in the area, demographics and their prominence during a specific time of day, and lack of resources. For instance, things commonly taken for granted, such as internet connection and electricity, may not always be available. Surroundings can also, impact, uh, can also impact the deployment's hardware. Storz et al. had an installation that was in a tunnel under a heavily trafficked street. Diesel exhaust continuously interfered with their equipment, for example, by clogging the projector filters, despite custom-built cases, housing, and other prior preparations. The media ribbon installation by Akkad et al. had a theater adjacent to it. Passersby often had limited time to interact as they were on their way to see a show. Moreover, the nature of each show could also potentially affect the demographic of people in that area. The increase in the number of people with a common interest several times a day, that is, before and after shows, provides an opportunity for increased interaction. Factors and surroundings may have similar effects as those in the events category, such as increased people flow. However, the differentiation is based on the prevalence of the cause. Properties of the surroundings are permanent, whereas events are temporary or one-off instances. As the fourth category, we consider space, which refers to the physical attributes of the immediate deployment area. Primarily, the characteristics of the space affect how people move in the space, how the space is being used, and by which group of people. For Mueller et al., nearby elevators influenced the use of their public display installation, as people would often interact with the system while they waited and then abruptly stopped when the elevator arrived. The Helsinki City Wall installation, which was positioned on a street under a sunshade, uh, what it experienced was that when it rained, people would use the sunshade, the, the sunshade to seek shelter, effectively blocking the visibility of the display. Now I'll hand it back to Ville, who will continue with the next categories. <clears throat> All right, so the fifth category is uh, inhabitants, by which we refer to effects and disruptions caused by the behavior and routines of people frequenting the location. Current literature largely investigates people as passers-by, in other words, potential users. However, with this category, we consider the people's day-to-day -day roles, such as guards, students, and managers, and how these people's normal behavior and routines may affect the deployment. Uh, we have an interesting story to share as an example of issues with inhabitants. During one of our deployments at a university campus, we had issues with the screen's projector that was attached to the ceiling. When che checking on the system, we would sometimes find that the proje projector was not on. We investigated several possibilities for the issue, and among other actions taken, we replaced the lamp in the projector, however, none of the measures helped. Finally, we asked the managers of the building to, uh, for help in identifying the cause for the issue. The managers eventually realized that one of the guards had been turning the projector off during his nightly rounds, assuming that it should not be on. Uh, the cause was quite surprising as we were at no point in contact with the guards. Furthermore, in the beginning of the deployment, it was clearly specified that 
specified with relevant authorities that our research team would manage the installation by themselves. In fact, we never even saw the guards and did not realize that they could interfere with the in installation. However, this example is quite unique in that the inhabitants, in this case, the guards actually changed their behavior because of the deployment. Other examples in this category are mostly about ignorance towards the deployment. For instance, when our deployment was set up on the wall, we would occasionally find that student organizations had set up their stands in front of the deployment or right next to it, even though there were plenty of options in the space to set up the stands elsewhere. Further, a few times we found that a janitor's cart had been left next to the wall, uh, obscuring part of our screen. As the sixth and final category, we consider vandalism. By vandalism, we refer to not only destruction of hardware and other equipment, but only also uh, inter intentional interference with the deployment. An interesting example can be found in the work by Dalsgaard and Halskov. In one of their outdoor media facade installations, someone tried to remove the colorful carpet from the ground, possibly with the assumption that it was enabling interaction. In reality, it was simply there to, merely, uh, to mark the interaction area more clearly. A more serious example was presented by Heikin and et al. Uh, a safety glass on one of their UBI hotspots in the city of Oulu was purposefully broken, resulting in a downtime of two weeks and around 7,000 euros in repair expenses. We briefly present some con considerations for all categories to identify and deal with potential issues. An in-depth discussion on these considerations can be found in the paper. For weather, we present three considerations. Consider the effects of sunlight uh, as it affects screen visibility and motion tracking sensors. Be prepared to install covers, hoods, shades, etc. Cover sensitive hardware as rain and humidity can cause surprising issues whether it affects people flow and the amount of people in the area. For events, we present the following. Identify upcoming uh, events in the area and be aware of their magnitude and nature. Design the deployment to handle large crowds, even if such crowds are not normally present. Consider turning the events to the deployment's advantage, for example, by tailoring the content to serve the participants of the events. For surroundings, we recommend to identify key locations in the surrounding areas, such as theaters and malls, and consider how they affect the demographics in the area at different times of day. Again, the display can be designed to serve these specific demographics. Identify technical limitations to accommodate network failures, power issues, and other potential factors. Many of these are often taken for granted, but however, these may not always be available. For space, we recommend to Observe the, installation, uh, uh, observe the physical characteristics of the installation space, the layout, placement of doorways, elevators, pillars, machines, and other displays. Further identify how these characteristics affect people and the use of the space. Utilize pillars and other objects within the space that can potentially create comfort spaces. Comfort spaces may encourage people to stick around, observe the display, and eventually start interacting. For inhabitants, we recommend observe and identify different groups of inhabitants and their routines and tasks in the space. Further, analyze how their routines and tasks could interfere with the deployment. Consider informing and engaging the inhabitants, particularly if the deployment is likely to interfere with the inhabitants' normal routines. Finally, for vandalism, we offer two practical considerations. Identify easy and obvious targets for vandalism, attach all, all parts to something sturdy, and hide easy targets. Consider moderating user-generated content as people may upload improper material. In conclusion, public displays are affected by a variety of external factors. We identified six categories, weather, events, surroundings, space, inhabitants, and vandalism. Furthermore, we found that the effects are almost always negative, which highlights the importance of dealing with these issues. We also identified four levels of reactions to the observed effects, ignoring, adapting, solving, and embracing. Ignoring and adapting were much more frequent responses. We believe this highlights the surprising nature of these issues and further highlights how difficult they are to solve completely or take advantage of. 
Therefore, researchers must be prepared to adapt. Overall, our work increases awareness of external factors in public spaces and helps being prepared for and deal with the resulting issues. This concludes our talk. Thank you for your attention and we'd be happy to receive any questions. Julie Williamson, University of Glasgow, um, and yeah, I totally agree that people tend to, to not, uh, for example, report how they address these challenges in their studies, and it's, you know, my question is, should we, how should we report in research papers how these anomalies affect the data that's collected um, and any distortions that might occur there? Uh, that's a very good question, actually, and uh, we had some ideas on it for future work. Uh, probably uh, potentially arranging a workshop or, or something like that. But it's true that uh, even gathering this data was painful to say the least because these, these issues were not the focus of research papers. So we simply gathered a huge set of papers and we had to read through them from the beginning to the end and only then we would know if they actually presented any uh, relevant issues. So, the, so these, are, these don't receive the attention that, that we believe they should deserve. Yeah, a workshop would be super cool. Um, thank you. I can resonate with all, all of the challenges you identify. Um, and just another one I was curious about is ownership and stewardship. So does it, I, I think in most cases it's not clear who owns the display, why mm -hmm. it's there, and why the public should engage with it. So I just wonder if you encountered... Um, sort of community-owned displays, and if there are any sort of differences, obviously the weather and thing, you know, make a difference. But for, for where we work, the sunlight is so strong, we pretty much never deploy anything outside, and it's got to mm -hmm. be in an inside space that's stewarded anyway. So I was curious if, if, if that you, you observed differences there in terms of ownership and stewardship. Uh, you mean differences in terms of? Well challenges that did are displays that are somehow um, community owned do they have fewer do they face fewer challenges mm -hmm. uh, and displays that are there for a long time because then they they work out a lot of that stuff um, mm -hmm. in in the in the in beginning of the deployment and so you're not looking at these short-term effects you're looking at like, I know in Finland you've got ones that have been out there from Months or years, yeah. right? So, so does that change uh, the nature mm. of uh, the difficulties when people know that they're owned by the city council, for example, or they know the community posts to them? Does right. does that? I would. Do you see fewer of those effects once you get long-term mm -hmm. deployments? Uh, yeah, we, with known ownership. Yeah, we didn't really focus on that in in this work, mm -hmm. but uh, there are actually several papers on that that is. Uh, discuss this sort of role of different stakeholders in the project. Mm. Um, so, do you yeah. have anything to add? Uh, I just wanted to add that our focus was looking on external factors. Oh, sorry. So our focus was looking on like external factors. So we oh, didn't okay. really uh, focus on the characteristics of the deployment itself, Fair but enough. more towards like yeah. what affects a deployment once it's in the public space. Okay. So we didn't look at like the duration of the deployment either, but more that it was a deployment in the wild that okay. faced some challenge that could not potentially be designed for because they were just so bizarre in some cases. Okay. And yeah. with this work, our idea is that we are highlighting these challenges that, you know, over the sort of collective public dis uh, deployment experience within mm -hmm. the HCI community, everybody's been kind of reporting these challenges, but nobody's yeah. really focused on them. So yeah. our, our main idea is to highlight them, like how they do affect deployments regardless of the duration of the deployment. So, you know, one yeah. or more of these challenges would affect it and kind of highlighting the need mm -hmm. to be able to kind of maybe think about what sort of effects could affect your deployment in the, I, in the design process. I think it's process. a very useful yeah. um, checklist, actually. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you.